Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. But I want to talk tonight specifically about, and write this down in your notes as the head of your topic tonight, restoring the culture of the kingdom of heaven. Restoring the culture, everybody say culture, of the kingdom of heaven. Restoring the culture of the kingdom of heaven. We're going to talk about that tonight. Why is this concept of culture so important? Culture is always in reference to a country or a community, a society. Culture. And I want to begin by talking a little bit about the concept of kingdoms. I believe that the, the most effective way to understand the message of Jesus is to visit the Caribbean. The Caribbean is the most perfect model of the kingdom of God. Strange statement. If you want to know what Jesus Christ was preaching, what is a kingdom and how it works, you should visit the Caribbean. Because the Caribbean is the perfect prototype the model of what God intended to happen on earth. Now, why do I say the Caribbean is a perfect model? I want you to listen carefully. I'm going to call some names of countries and I want you to tell me what language they speak. Are you ready? Cuba, Haiti, Trinidad, Saint Martinique. Mm, good. Hispaniola, Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys are pretty good. Barbados. Mm -hmm. St. Martin. French. Guyana. Colombia. Mm. Brazil. You see, this whole region is amazing. Now the Bahamas, where I am living, and where we are now, speaks what? Right next door is Haiti. What do they speak? And right below us is Cuba. What do they speak? What do we speak? What does Cuba speak? What does Haiti speak? We're right next to each other. We all don't understand each other. It's the perfect model of kingdom. I want to quote for you, and you can turn there if you want to, the first public statement made by Jesus. It's found in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Matthew 4 is his first public statement, his first announcement that he made to the world. He's 30 years old, he just left the wilderness full of the Holy Spirit, he passed his test, and his first declaration is his mission statement. And he always repeated that same statement throughout his whole ministry for three and a half years. I quote, Matthew 4, 17. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has arrived on earth. That was his announcement. Every page after that in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will find him repeating that message. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven. Sometimes we will use the word the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are different. Let me explain the difference. I got an email yesterday of someone who was reading my book on the kingdom and they said that they wanted to have that clarified. The kingdom of heaven is a place. The kingdom of God is an influence. The kingdom of heaven is the headquarters. It's the country, the invisible country where God's throne is. The kingdom of God is the influence of that country on territories. So the message of Jesus Christ is very important because he didn't choose a democracy. He didn't choose a republic. He didn't choose a socialist government. 
he chose this concept of kingdom and people born in America know very little if not nothing about kingdoms because they were born in a democracy in a republic and republics are opposite to democracies and this is why to read the Bible from a, democ from a democracy concept rather will always distort the scriptures because the Bible is about a king not a president Jesus Christ taught a kingdom not a republic I think it would be helpful therefore to define what a kingdom is you can write this down a kingdom is the governing influence of a king over his territory impacting it with his will his purpose and his intent I'm going to repeat that a kingdom is the governing influence of a king a person over his territory and that word his is important that means a king actually owns the country that's the difference between a kingdom and a democracy or a republic. The president or the prime minister doesn't own the country. But in a kingdom, the king actually owns the country. He also owns the people and everything in the country. In a republic or in a democratic society, the government doesn't own the country. So a kingdom is the governing influence of a king over a territory, impacting it with his personal will. In other words, in a kingdom, the king's personal interest becomes policy. The king's personal will becomes law. That's why the Bible teaches, thy will be done, yes, on where? Earth, just like it is where? That's the headquarters country. In other words, a king wants his will to be done. He doesn't want your suggestions to be done. In a kingdom, there's no... Uh, Congress or Parliament to discuss which laws they're going to create in a kingdom there is no Congress and no kind of Parliament no Senate in a kingdom there's only the king and he has his council that he chooses around him and they are called ecclesia chosen ones the word we use as church and their job is to take the mind of the king and document it as law and then to enforce it on the territory I'm gonna repeat that the job of the ecclesia the chosen ones by the king is to take the king's thoughts make them law legislation and enforce them in the kingdom so when the king speaks the ecclesia takes the law the words of the king makes it law and makes it legislation that's why the church is supposed to stay close to Jesus because he's the king we are the ecclesia and our job is to is to take the word of the king make it law in our territories and impact the territory with that law so a kingdom is very personal now you gotta listen to me carefully the Bahamas and Cuba and Trinidad and Haiti and Hispaniola and Dominican Republic and Dominica and all the nations in the, in the Caribbean uh, they are all manifestations of the power of kingdoms over territories one of the things that kingdoms do historically this is true is that they love to take new territory why because the power of a king is related to the territory he owns the more territory a king has the greater he's respected by the other kings that's why kings like to invade and control new territory God is king of the worlds unseen the Bible says open ye gates and let who the king of glory come who is the king of glory the Lord of hosts he is the king of glory so open up the gates and let the king of glory come in who is the Lord the king of glory the Lord of hosts the Lord strong and mighty the Lord strong and mighty he is the king of glory the Lord of hosts that means a lot of armies armies king like kingdoms have armies so they can take territory now God is the Lord the king of what glory that means everything that he made with his weight the unseen world he is king over that but he also wanted to rule another territory which didn't exist so he created it it's called the universe the physical universe is territory that God created just to have more territory for him to rule. 
How can I prove it? He wants his will to be in the seen and the unseen. Scientists have so far, so far discovered over 500 million galaxies. Oh dear, a galaxy is a multiplication of solar systems, which means there's a multiplication of millions of planets. So there's the universe, they still haven't found the end of it yet. They're still trying to find the end of the universe. It is so big. And according to the word of God, he holds the universe between his thumb and his little finger. I think we got a pretty big God. Give him praise. That's a big God. Our telescopes cannot find the end of what he holds in his hands. It's an awesome God. He's king. He created the earth and all the other planets and he chose by his own divine prerogative to place one planet amidst all of that as his extension of his influence practically so he chose to put his children on a planet called earth and he gave them a command Genesis 126 he says let them have what dominion over the earth so he wanted to extend his unseen influence to the seen world through his family sons of men that's why you are made in God's image. You are called a son of God. Why? You are God's family. The Bible is about three things. It's about a king, a kingdom, and a royal family. I'm going to repeat it. The Bible is not about a religion. It's about a king, a kingdom, and a royal family. The Bible is about government. That's why the Bible speaks of the Messiah. When he comes, he says, For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Not a religion. He's coming with a governor. It says, and to his government there shall be no end. It never says to his religion shall there be no end. Christianity is a religion. But the kingdom of God is a government. It talks about rulership, influence, impact. I want you to stay with me now. Now, when kingdoms take over territories, read my lips, those territories are called colonies. A colony is a territory under the control of a kingdom. Once a kingdom takes over a territory, the intent of the kingdom is to transform the colony into the kingdom. So that the colony takes on the characteristics and the culture of the kingdom so you can always tell look at me now this can get sweet you can always tell who controlled the territory by studying the colony the king of Portugal took over Brazil the king of England took over the Bahamas. The British also got Barbados, they got Trinidad, they got Jamaica. The French kingdom took over Haiti, they took over Saint Matalupe, Guadeloupe. The Spanish kingdom took over Cuba, they took over uh, Dominican Republic. Now, if you really want to see the power of kingdoms, study the Dominican Republic and Haiti. They are the same island there's a line right down the middle between the island. One side speaks French, the other side speaks Spanish. Why? Because two kingdoms grabbed the same island. Now watch this. Whoever took the island, the island looked like it, talks like it, dresses like it, eats like it. So if you go to Cuba, you think you went to Spain. Check it out. The architecture, the food, the language. If you come to the Bahamas, you think you're in England. Narrow streets, drive on the left-hand side, we speak English, you know, come on, fellow, jolly well old chap. See, we got their knife and forks, their short pants, long socks. We grew up singing, God save our gracious queen. In Cuba, it looks like you're in Spain. When you go to Haiti, they drink wine with cheese. French. Watch this. And they all speak the language of their kingdom. You can always tell where a person is from by their language. See, now listen to me. The purpose for a governor in a kingdom, the most powerful person in a kingdom is the governor. Stop thinking democracy. Stop thinking democracy. You got to think kingdom. Every 
only country in the Caribbean that was under a kingdom the kingdom always sent a person from the kingdom to live in the territory he was called the governor there was one in in Haiti there was one in Cuba there's one in the Bahamas there's one in Jamaica and Barbados and St. Lucia St. Thomas St. Kitts they were all the way wherever they take they sent a governor and the governor's job he was he was always from the kingdom the governor was never from the territory why he had to have original culture and his job was to produce the culture of the kingdom in the territory the first thing they made us learn when they first took over our lives was we had to learn English now let me just say something you need to understand 90% of the people who live in the Caribbean are black people whether Indian or Negroes from Africa now here's watch this all of them are related you know all the black folks in the, in the Caribbean are cousins same boats same slave trade okay but watch what happens many of them ended up same families now but in different kingdoms this is important same family but depends what kingdom you fell under you took on a line you can't even talk to your own brother anymore you see when you enter the kingdom of God even though you're in the, in the family of people You grew up with your brother and sister, but when you enter the kingdom of God, they don't know you anymore. You change. Even though you're in the same family. Why? You're now under a different culture. You stop cussing. You stop telling dirty stories. You stop dressing funny. Why? Because suddenly you are under another culture and your own family don't recognize you anymore. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Clap your hands. The Haitian and the Jamaican and the Barbadians are all family to the Bahamians different boats different languages different foods different culture it's the power of a kingdom it changes everything it touches the key to that change listen carefully is the governor if you can get the governor in the colony the colony is in trouble because the governor is now going to change the curriculum of the schools he's going to change the culture of the people he's going to change the language of the people and he's going to make them just like his kingdom that's his job that's why when Christ left the earth he says I'm going but I'm coming right back I'm gonna send one the father the governor will send you a governor and he will be with you in the colony I shall teach you how to think he will train he will train you how to talk he give you a new language getting ahead of myself are you following me so write this down the principal goal and purpose of Jesus coming to earth was to deliver the governor of heaven to the colony of earth Adam used to have the governor here Adam declared independence from heaven so the governor had to leave when the Bahamas became independent in 1973 the first person to leave the Bahamas was the governor of England why he was he was suddenly illegal don't you forget that you see the moment that our government signed that release to be independent and that fly came down the governor was illegal so the Queen of England with call recall withdrew the governor and the Bahamas became independent you become independent when the governor leaves are you following me yes and that's why today there's never been a governor from England in this country since the governor of the Bahamas is what? A Bahamian. He cannot teach you anything other than what, he, what, what you already know. He's a Bahamian. When Adam disobeyed God, he caused heaven to recall the governor. And so man stopped learning heaven language. He stopped living heaven values. He lost heaven's culture. He lost heaven's values, her morals. He began to have his own independent ideas about life 
That's why the Bible says there's a way that seemed right unto the man, but the end of the way of death. You begin to live, we begin to live our own style, our culture. We develop a culture called the culture of the kingdom of darkness. The first act in our culture was a brother killed another brother. Murder. What a way to start a new culture. Killing. Cain killed Abel. Ever since then, we've been killing one another. It's what? It's our culture. The thief comes put forth to kill, steal, to destroy. That means the king of darkness has a culture. It's a culture of killing, stealing, destruction. That's why you take drugs. That's why folks are in gangs. That's why you have broken homes. His job is his culture to destroy. That's why there's so much sweetheart. It's a culture. To be unfavorable to your wife is a culture. Destroys families, destroys children, destroys homes. Incest, abuse, domestic violence are all parts of a culture. Jesus came to bring back to earth what Adam lost. What did Adam lose? The governor. The governor. Math, Acts chapter 2, very important. And God has raised Jesus to life. This is Peter talking. After they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the governor came back to earth and they began to speak in their native language again. <laughs> Tongues is not for some specific group of people. It's for the whole world. It's Adam's original language. It's from our country, heaven. And so suddenly these 120 people who were in that room picked up their native language again. Why? The governor was back in town. Give the Lord a hand for the governor back in town. When the governor comes back to town, he the first thing he gives you is language. I'm going to show you in a minute why language is important. But the first thing he gives you is language. And here's what Peter said. Peter says, God has raised this Jesus to life and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has what? Received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and what? Hear. You're supposed to hear yes. his presence. Not just see it. When the governor comes back to earth, he comes back into your life, we supposed to not just see him. It's supposed to show up in some evidence of language. Tongues is reconnection to your original language. That's all it is. It's not a weird thing. Matter of fact, English is not your original language. Tongues is your original language. We call it tongues because we don't know what to call it. <laughs> tongues don't make any sense, but that's the word we came up with, you know. You're speaking in tongues, whatever that is. Whatever that is, I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it is a language. I want you to look at this. Matthew 3. John the Baptist says, I baptize you in water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, I whose sandals I am not fit to carry. Watch this. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with what? Fire. He said, look, I'm baptized in water, but there's another guy coming with the governor. <laughs> I'm the announcer. He is the bringer. Mark 1, verse 7. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, John speaking, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with what? The governor the holy spirit he could bring see what what john is saying is the ultimate goal of jesus was not calvary john didn't say there come ones after me and he will die for your sins on the cross and shed his blood john no 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 he said that ain't a real issue that's a means the end is to get the governor back because that's what you lost he says, 
my job my ultimate job is to baptize you in water his ultimate job is to baptize you in the Holy Spirit to get you back in touch with your country can I hear an amen the most important person in the colony of any kingdom is the governor the most important person on earth is the Holy Spirit because the earth belongs to God but he has no control unless the governor is present I like what it says you know uh, about Holy Spirit it says that when he comes he shall guide you into all truth now everybody say culture the reason for the governor is to produce culture write that down please the purpose for a governor is to produce culture understanding culture is important every country or kingdom or nation manifests itself in what we call cultural and social expressions the way you can tell a person's origin is their culture there's certain ways Americans act with it that's an American Bahamas that's a Bahamian Jamaican that's a Jamaican why do we say that about people because after a while you stick around them long enough you begin to pick up some things but you know mannerisms you know attitudes language especially in other words every nation expresses itself in cultural uniqueness that's important every nation embraces a common language huh. write this down please language is the key to unity and communication the most important thing in a country is language the most important thing in a culture is language I'm saying something very important here a country is not a country until they all speak the same language this is why there's a stress going on right now in the United States there's a stress you know talk about immigrants and the the stress the stress the social stress is because people who were you know aware what an American was are becoming confused now they're not sure what is an American anymore you go to past America you can't even understand what they're talking about and they say they're Americans well, you see, the Americans agreed that their language is English. The French agreed their language is French. And the Spanish agreed their language is Spanish. Now, when you come into those countries, it's supposed to be your responsibility and the government's to make sure you learn the language of the country. You don't bring your language to the country. You adopt the country's language. Otherwise, you will destroy the nation. I'm talking to something very important that's why <laughs> when we were slaves our great-grandfathers and mothers they made sure we didn't speak our language we had to speak our patois privately it was illegal to speak your native language read the history book it was illegal you would be punished if you spoke the language of your fathers why because the way you control a country is to make everyone speak the same language because language is the key to unity It's very important the fall of man disrupted the culture and the language of the kingdom of heaven on earth we lost the language <laughs> we lost the thing that made us one with heaven heaven doesn't understand us anymore that's why the Bible says the mind of the spirit is opposite to the mind of the flesh they don't think the same thing because my thoughts are not your thoughts the way you think is a different language than the way I think he says your ways ways means culture are not my ways you don't act like me anymore you guys are strangers the fall of man destroyed our language write this down Jesus came to restore the culture and the language of the kingdom of heaven on earth that's why he came he came to restore what the language and the culture of heaven on earth and therefore he had to get the governor in the territory when he rose from the dead his first act this is important was he went to them and he breathed on them and he said receive see means to have re means to go back to the original state receive means to have again so he's telling them you lost him here he is again in Genesis chapter 2 verse 8 
He breathed into them. Matthew 20, verse 14. He breathed on them. He gave them back what they lost. Therefore, he put you back in position to reconnect to your original culture and your original language, which is from heaven. And therefore, the key to kingdom culture is the spirit of the kingdom. You got to have the governor. You cannot live in the kingdom of God without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the key to the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's why no matter how much religion you go to, how many mass you attend, how many songs you sing in the choir, it doesn't matter. God don't care. He ain't interested in that. If you ain't got the Holy Spirit, you ain't in the kingdom. Oh, hear me. Nicodemus was the head of the worship center. He was the senior pastor of the synagogue. Christ says, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Except a man be born again of the Spirit. He cannot enter the lifestyle of the kingdom of heaven. Being in the Red Cross, going to Rotary, helping with the key club, being nice to poor people, you still ain't in the kingdom, you're going straight to hell. If you ain't got the kingdom spirit, you ain't in the kingdom. It doesn't matter how long your mother and daddy been pastors. If you ain't got the spirit of God, you ain't in the kingdom. Because he is the source of culture. He's the source of language. Now, What's the language of culture? Yeah, write this down. The original culture of Eden was one language. Did you all know that? One language. As a matter of fact, Genesis 11 tells us about it. It says, now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shina and settled there. Remember when God threw them out of the Garden of Eden? Chapter 3? He threw them where? He told them, go east. He threw them out of the Garden. And they went east. Well, here they show again in verse 11, chapter 11, it says, they, were, they went east and they still had the language. <laughs> they still were able to speak one language. Watch this. The power of language. The next verse. I love it. Verse 11. Chapter, verse, chapter 11, verse, verse 6. Then the Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they began to do this thing, then nothing they plan to do would be impossible to them. Why? If as one people with the same language. God says the key to power is language. You remember this is the chapter where they decided to build the Tower of Babel? Or Babel, we call it, we call it Tower of Babel. It wasn't actually called the Tower of Babel, but that's, what, that's the name was given to it afterward because they were babbling. You know, God did something to the language. We can talk about it in a minute. But you see, they, they wanted to build this tower up to heaven. And the Bible says, they, they said, read my list, please. They said, we will build a tower unto our name. Bad idea. When you build anything unto you and use God's material, He's going to confuse you. It's called idol worship. Anything more important than God is an idol. And they were about to build a tower more important than God. They said, we build it unto our own selves. When you do anything for yourself and yourself alone, God will destroy it and you. Guaranteed. All the time. Now, I'm saying that for a reason. God was not against the tower. God wants you to build a dream in your heart. He put it there. What he's against is who you're building it for. <laughs> you should do everything for his name's sake. Say it. His name. Say, if it's not for his glory, it's for your destruction. God loves buildings. As a matter of fact, the first command God gave Moses, build something. God told Solomon, build something. Told David, build something. God liked you to build stuff. And he liked good things, you know. 
Read how God told Moses to build. I need to say, put diamonds, put gold, put wood, put... He said, I want nice thing. God like building. But make sure it's for his name. Now watch this. What did God say was the key to their success? He tells us. One language. Watch this. If as one people speaking the same language, they begin and agree to do this thing, nothing shall be impossible. You see, the power of language is the ability to produce. God says the danger with these people is that they speak the same language. And when people speak the same language, God says, nothing shall be impossible to them. That's why the Bahamians and the Haitian can't build anything together. That's why the Cuban and the American can't build it. Why? Because the language barrier. Now, notice what it says in, in verse 1. The whole world at that time had one language. That means the whole world was powerful. And they used that power of language to build something for themselves. And God said, this is wrong. Everything you use in his mind, the dirt is mine, the mortar is mine, the straw is mine, the nails, the hammer, all mine. And you build it in your, for your glory? Give me back my things, including my tongue. Watch God now. God says, come, let who? Say it loud. Let who? This is the first time in the Bible we have ever seen where all of God came to earth. Now you see, all of God never came to earth. Holy Ghost here, the word ain't here. Christ ain't here. When Christ was here, the Father was in heaven. They were, they were never in the same place all at once. But according to God, the most, <laughs> the only thing that made all of God come to earth is one language. Stay with me. He says, let's go down and do what? Confuse their language. He didn't say, let's destroy the tower. Because you ain't got to destroy the tower if they can't talk to one another. You tell the fellow to bring the hammer, so you say, yabby, 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 You say, what? Yabby, 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 Bring what? Yabby, 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 So the fellow knows what you want to bring. <laughs> so I need five nails. All of a sudden he said, I need five nails. You live there. What? You live there. Live there. <laughs> God says, look. Watch this. The key to power is one language. The key to weakness is many languages. And that's why the United Nations is a mess. Because we're trying to live together with many languages. And that's why our church is a mess. Because we're trying to live together with many languages. We Baptists, we don't speak in tongues. Be Catholics, you don't believe in it. Methodists never touched it. I mean, everybody gets it. Everybody got their own stuff going on. Presbyterians, you know, yeah, seven day advantage. We can like the day, not the language, just the day. Give us the day. You know, everybody got it. God look, this is a confusion. They're so weak, that's why we can't affect the earth as church. I don't care nothing but your religion nothing my question are you in the kingdom second question have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed I'm reading I'm gonna read this voice in a minute I got it right here tonight you can read it see you, you can believe and still know how to be in the kingdom and I believe yeah but you ain't got the Holy Spirit I go to church do you have the Holy Spirit Yes. Do you speak in tongues? No. Then you ain't got the active Holy Spirit. <laughs> I said active. That means you got the well, but you ain't got the river yet.
Look at this. He says, so they would not understand each other. Look at verse 9. And this is why it was called what? Babel. You ever say this? I mean, our culture, where we get the word from. Stop babbling. Babbling means that I don't understand what you're saying. That's where the word comes from. The tower was not called the tower of Babel. That was, the, that was the description of the problem that recurred after God destroyed their language ability. Hmm. When you speak in tongues, people say you're babbling. In fact, it's the reverse. It's getting deep. English to God is babbling. <laughs> French to God is babbling. Spanish is babbling. But when you start, the Bible says the mind shuts down and the spirit understands every single word. He that prayed in an unknown tongue prayed unto God. God has to decode your English to understand your prayer. That's why the Bible says when you don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit will help you with groanings that you cannot utter with your language. English is interference in prayer. That's why I pray in tongues all the time. I love praying in tongues. Why? I ain't got to decode nothing. That's why it's important to learn speaking tongues, young man. Get the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues now, at nine, at eight, at seven. Why? Because you want to learn to speak in your father's in heaven's language now. So when you pray, no matter how old you are, you are praying in the Holy Spirit's language. Can I hear an amen? Very important. He says, this is why it's called Babel, because there the Lord confused what? The language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the earth. When you don't understand each other, you separate yourself. Have you noticed? And that's when nations became different. And that's why you like to be with people who you, who you understand. So all the English go together, all the French go together, all the Spanish go together, Portuguese go together, you know, Swahili go together, everybody kind of go, in the, and that's what creates all the tension because the language creates the differences, the differences create the contest, the pressure, the conflict, and now we got war. War is created by language. Yeah. This is why the devil fights the baptism in the Holy Spirit so much. The devil created doctrines against it to make sure you and I never speak the same language again. They got theological positions on it. They send you to seminaries to tell you it doesn't exist anymore. And you get a degree in foolishness. Come out with your degree. There's no thing of the Holy Ghost, you see. And they give you a degree in ignorance. And it stops you from having power. But in this place, God shall baptize everybody in the Holy Spirit. And you shall all speak with new tongues. Come on, shout amen. My prayer is that there'll be a place filled with thousands of people. And they're speaking the same language. The devil is in trouble when we start speaking in tongues. Lift your hands, just speak in tongues for five seconds. Come on, just make him nervous. I dare you, I dare you to speak in tongues in the name of Jesus. Rokashi brosate le korami breso toromotu kamra. Brasala rakasi krondo romosi frebo solera moshi. And if you ain't got it, I command you to release it on the inside in the name of Jesus. Let that well become a river tonight. Flow in the name of Jesus. For he's a faithful God. That language is your key, young man. Listen, I used to be an F student in school, and I started speaking in tongues in high school. And I became the top student in the school, graduated top of the school. God says, I confused their language so they couldn't even live together. How, why is language so important? I call it the priority of language. Write this down. The promise was not just for power, but for language. See, a lot of you hear the, the Lord say, Thou shalt receive power. Yeah, but that wasn't the only promise. 
Look at this promise, Mark 16, verse 17. It says, And these signs will accompany those who believe. In other words, here is the evidence that you believe in the work of Jesus on the cross, what he did for you. Here's the evidence that you've received his work. In my name, they will drive out demons, Jesus speaking, and they will speak with new tongues. He says the evidence that they are reconnected to heaven is they'll get their authority back on earth, drive out demons, and they'll get their language back on earth, they'll speak in new tongues. How do I know you're from Cuba? Open your mouth. That's supposed to prove it. You tell me you're a Cuban and don't speak Spanish, you lying. Come on, y'all talk to me. <laughs> you, you tell me a lie. See, when you open your mouth, it's supposed to expose your heritage. When you hear a person say, Gun and them and Yena, you ain't got to guess where they come from. Come on, y'all talk to me? Mm-hmm. And if someone ever say joke, oh Lord, you from Bain Town, brother. You ain't just from now, so you from Bain Town. See how powerful language is? It reveals your heritage. Now, what I want you to note is who's speaking here. This is not Paul. This is not Peter. This is not Moses. This ain't John. This is Jesus himself. He says, when you believe, there'll be two signs that show up. One, you have suddenly you got authority over earth. Why? You got the governor again. And secondly, your language will change immediately. Speaking in tongues supposed to be as natural as speaking in English or Spanish or French. It was the Apostle Paul who says, I am glad I speak in tongues more than all of you. Paul spoke in tongues more than he spoke in Hebrew, which was his native language. His real language was, was tongues. Paul understood it. That's why Paul said, Paul said, I will pray with the understanding and I'll pray in the spirit. I'll pray in both. Why? Because when I don't know what to pray in, in English, I shift over in, in, in Hebrew. I shift over in stuff I don't know because I don't know what's going on. I got to pray in my native tongue. Very important, write this down. Acts chapter 2 records the restoration of the kingdom culture and the kingdom language. Two things that a kingdom has, culture and language. Language is the component of culture. Your language is, is the container of your culture. If you and I can't speak the same language, we can never have the same culture. Because we can't communicate. So the key to our community is our language. Sometimes you go to visit America and people talk to you and even though they're Americans, you could tell which, which part of the country they're from, can't you? I mean, the folks in Georgia, y'all, y'all, in New York, y'all, you know, whatever. You tell the difference. I know where you're from by your language. Your language gives you away. In the Philippines, different language. In Haiti, different language. And when they talk, you go, oh, I know where you're from. That's the way they're supposed to do when you speak in tongues. So I know where you're from. I know where you're from. Yes, you are in the Bahamas, but you ain't from the Bahamas. You are in the world, but not... Y'all talk to me. Your language is supposed to say, I know where you're from. That's why you should never be ashamed to speak in tongues in public. Paul says, he that's speaking in tongues in public, it is a sign to the unbeliever. Yes. It's supposed to be proof that you are not from earth, even though you live here. Your language is your proof. Your authority is your proof. How can you have such authority? Because I'm reconnected to the governor. I'm a representative. I am an ambassador of my country, backed up by my government. Don't fool with me. And if you touch me, I'll talk to them in language you don't understand. Come on, talk to me. 
I talked to the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he sent some armies to back me up. Give his angels charge concerning me. Write this down. The power of the governor is to affect change in the colony, to implement government policy. That's why the governor is in the policy, is in the colony. The Holy Spirit is on earth to affect change. Ah, this is so important. See, this is where the theology of Christianity conflicts with the theology of the kingdom. The kingdom theology says the Holy Spirit is supposed to affect change on earth. The theology of the Christianity is that the Holy Spirit came to get you out of earth. Escapism. So all of our songs are filled with wrong theology. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll... Why you won't fly away? He says, Thy will be done on earth, not in heaven. How about this prayer that Jesus prayed for you? He says, Father, do not take them out of the world. How do you deal with that prayer? Let me tell me, friends. There's a pink house uptown with a pink wall around it. They built that house here. England built that house here. It's still here. Over 150 years old. They did not build a tent. It's a stone house in the bedrock of the country. Why? When a governor comes, he plans to stay. Because he comes to affect change. The Holy Spirit is here to change our culture, our society, our politics, our educational system, the media, business, law, education, investors, corporate exec. He is here to infiltrate the whole country so that there's a culture from heaven in law, a culture from heaven in education, a culture in heaven in music and industry and entertainment, a culture of heaven in, 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 in educational classroom lessons, a culture of heaven in politics so that the country begins to look like heaven on earth. And so will come to pass thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth just like it is in heaven he said, that's the prayer you must pray it comes to effect change not to take you out oh i can't wait for august to come i'm going to start teaching in august on how to affect the community through kingdom policy it's going to last six months just to teach that one thing. Because you see, we are so brainwashed to leave. We ain't no good to earth. One little light bill, you want to go to heaven. You lazy thing, you. Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulation. He says, but have no fear. Why? I've overcome the world. And so you shall overcome the world system. Clap loud. Give him praise. He said, you will overcome the world system. You don't run from it. You take control of it. Can I hear an amen? amen. Romans 14 verse 17. Read it loud together. Go. For the kingdom of God, here it is, is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of what? Righteousness and peace and joy. Where? In the Holy Spirit. See, I told you, the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. The influencer, the governor. The governor is a sign that the kingdom is present. The governor is a sign that the kingdom is in the colony. When the governor is in the colony, the kingdom is present. When the governor leaves, the kingdom left. 
So, according to this scripture, it says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink and food. Let me tell you something, friend. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That's why some of the charismatic movement is becoming a concern to me. Because we built a religion on things. Boy, you, you, you got your car yet? You got your house yet? You must be got enough faith. The kingdom is not about cars. It's not about food and houses. It's about influence. The word righteousness, we dealt with that two Sundays ago. It means what? Right positioning with the government. Being lined up with the authority of the government. He said, that's righteousness. He said, that's where the kingdom of God is. It's about being lined up with the government influence. So do not worry about what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear, how you will live. For your father knows you need these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his and these things. You don't seek things. You seek to line up yourself with the government. And the government takes you of the things for you. Give him a praise. That's a powerful thing. He said, because anyone who serves Christ in this way, what way? In right standing with the government of God in the Holy Spirit is pleasing to God and approved by him. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. That's a sweet one. If God ever approves of you, he's going to give you a big house. You're going to get your fine car. You're going to get them nice clothes. If God approves of you, you know you're straight. you straight, straight, straight. If God be for you, oh, glory, hallelujah. Who can be against you? You got to get God to approve of you. He says, here's how to get him to approve of you. You got to get the Holy Spirit in your life and stay lined up with the government of God and God will stamp approval on you and everything you need will be added unto you. This is kingdom blessing. This is kingdom message. This is good stuff. Can I shout amen with you? Amen. If he approves of you, they can't stop your promotion. I'm talking to you in the Holy Ghost right now. I'm prophesying. If he approves of you, no supervisor can stop your promotion. Don't even think about him. Just go to work and smile. If they get in the way of your progress, he will remove them, not you. What you need is God's approval. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was approved of God. And that's why he had such success. He walked in the Holy Spirit. Here's the verse you want to remember. 1 Corinthians 4. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Power here means dynamic influence. He said the kingdom of God is not in talk. It's in evidence that things have changed. They see that you change your clothing. They see that you change your language. They see that you change your attitude. They see that you change your friendships. They see that you stop doing things that are against the kingdom. The proof that you are in the kingdom of God is evidence that you are living a different culture. That's why I find it hard. When you tell me that they believe in Jesus, and nothing changed. They still drinking, cussing, sleeping around, committing adultery, fornication, shacking up. And they come to church and sing. They in the kingdom. He said, it ain't a matter of talk. It's a matter of dynamic change. If the Holy Spirit lives in you, you cannot enjoy sin anymore. It'll make you sick. And you know what I'm talking about, those who got the Holy Spirit. You try to mess up, the Holy Spirit will mess you up in, the, in your mess. Whoop you while you're having fun. Whoop you all through your fun. Whoop you. Slap you all side your head. Matter of fact, when you finish, you, you go and it wasn't worth it. It, it, it. I got beaten too bad. I ain't going back there no more. That, that even ain't worth the struggle. He will whoop you. Why? Different culture. You call it conviction. I call it whooping. He whoop you. Why? Because he comes in power. You don't just talk and say you're in the kingdom of God. The language changes. You're speaking tongues. Let me close with a couple of thoughts here. And then I want to pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. 
Mark chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. It says, And these signs shall accompany those who believe in my name. They will what? Speak in new tongues. Acts 2, 4. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And what happened when they did it? They began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. <coughs> when you receive the Holy Spirit, He takes over your language. Why? Here's the beauty of this whole thing. The beauty of it is, you can play, go ahead, brother. The beauty of this is this. Here's the beauty of it. God destroyed the language in chapter 11 of Genesis so he can weaken them. Now he comes back to earth and he gives them language back so he can strengthen them. I have traveled over 70 countries. It's incredible. I go to those countries. I don't understand some of those languages. But I would get in those conferences, in the churches where I go to speak, in Germany, France, in England, in, in, in Africa. I go to these countries and I stand there and the people, you know, I was just in Russia, in the Ukraine, and 20,000 people in the auditorium. I don't understand a word in Russia except Dobri. Dobri means God. That's what I remember. Dobri. Everything else is foreign to me. I don't understand. But when we start worship. Oh. And I hear 20,000 Russian speaking people start speaking in tongues. Oh, I join in. Well, hey, we won now. Oh, glory. And the whole place explodes with this language. Suddenly I feel at home. power of unity is a language my wife and I went to Germany some years ago and now uh, we went to a Pentecostal church in Germany I went to preach man everybody speaking German oh then they started worshiping and they started speaking in town oh, Lord have mercy I was home all of a sudden I was home man I joined and they heard us speaking tongues it was like we home we are one one family it was tongues that did it. And then when we finish, I don't understand a word anymore. We become strangers again. The language made us one. And in those moments of worship in tongues, is when the power of God came and kissed every meeting I was in. That's why we speak in tongues here in this church. And if you don't speak in tongues yet, I promise you, you're going to get it. You're going to be okay. Because you have to get it. What? That's your native language. They shall speak with new tongues as the Spirit gives them utterance. This is the promise of the Father. I tell you, when I, th when I, when I think about Acts 19, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding who? Finding who? Finding who? Say it, man. Finding who? Okay. Certain who? What kind of disciples? Certain. Okay, a lot of people are certain disciples. They're just certain. There's a certain, there's a certain group over there. There's a certain group over there. There's a certain group over there. You got these certain groups. Now, notice that they are disciples. Which means that they got, you know, all the paperwork down. They got the same book, the Bible, and everything. They got disciples. So, Paul, read, this, read it out loud. Read. He said unto them, Stop reading. Pause and look. You guys got all the motions. Something missing. Hey, I wanna pause and look. You got the Holy Spirit? John chapter one. But do you have the Holy Spirit? Are you with me? They were in church, going through a service. Paul says, "You know something? Y'all ain't got the governor." You got the book, you got all the rituals, you got everything down. He says, you missing the most important thing in the whole thing Jesus did. You could believe and still not have. And believe here means you got all the religious stuff down. Sing all the songs, quote all the verses. You remember when you used to go to that service? Remember? You did everything. You take your 
communion and then go and drink liquor right afterwards get drunk he says you you got this all worked out but you ain't got the governor what Paul's gonna do now watch Paul and they said unto him read out loud we have not even much as heard that there be such a thing that theology didn't even didn't include they're no different from what's going on today there's some churches say you you speak in what you better stop that gibberish why because that theology has no room for the Holy Spirit nothing's new under the Sun the argument is as old as 2,000 years they said we haven't even, haven't even heard that you could have such a thing read out loud Paul's response and he said unto them unto what then were you baptized and they said unto John's baptism in other words man we, we, we believe in the Messiah and everything we believe in Jesus but we haven't received what he bought John said we must believe in the Messiah we believe in the Messiah we believe in Jesus but we haven't received what he bought Paul's response read when they come on read it and when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus remember he's supposed to baptize you in what the Holy Ghost and when Paul laid his hands on them now watch these folks never did before you know, the Holy Ghost came on them and what's the first sign and they spake with tongues prophesied that's in your Bible going through the rituals without the Spirit the evidence that you are part of the country again if you pick up the language again speaking in tongues is not an option you grew up in a church where they, they don't practice it no problem but it's too late tonight I'm showing you the evidence forget your theology in your church if it comes against the Bible you better get what the Bible so you're supposed to have because your church don't take you to heaven I'm telling you now the Holy Spirit gets you into God's kingdom he says you must receive this Paul says and they received it and they spoke in tongues look at the next verse it says what know you not that your body is what the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you he dwells in us which you have received from God you are not your own anymore you were bought with a price he paid for your body so he could come back to his governor's house your body is the governor's mansion and every colony must have a governor's mansion and wherever you are the governor is present so when you go in your bedroom tonight you shut that light off the governor is in your house when you go in your car today and you pull off in your car the governor is driving tonight when you go to work tomorrow I don't care what's going on around you on your job or when you go to school tomorrow the governor went to school the governor went to work the governor is present and don't be afraid to tell them it's gonna be a good day folks because the governor is in this place with you and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty give the Lord a big praise thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose it is your love support and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.